Did you know that most people chase happiness by focusing on external things? Money, possessions, status and social approval, only to discover that they feel emptier than ever. If you want to live a truly fulfilling life, you need to stop looking outside of yourself and start building wealth within. Think about it. What if happiness wasn't about how much you owned, but about how you managed your thoughts, emotions and mindset? What if the path to peace, joy and purpose was less about striving for more and more, and more about simplifying your life and cultivating what truly matters? The best mindset shift I've ever heard is that fulfillment comes from focusing on clarity, gratitude and simplicity not on material wealth or constant distractions. Avoid this mistake waiting for external circumstances to change in order to feel happy. Instead, you must look inward and learn how to control your mind, simplify your life and unlock the riches within. Don't believe this myth that happiness comes from having everything you want. True happiness doesn't come from external success, it comes from mastering your inner world and learning to find joy in the simple things. So, if you're ready to transform your mindset, live with purpose and build wealth that no one can ever take from you, stick with me. This journey begins with understanding how you can release external validation, recognize life's natural cycles and cultivate inner peace. Let's get started. Number one. Control what's within, release what's without. There's something liberating about having a perfect cup of coffee on a rainy morning or hitting every green light on the way to work. Everything feels effortless, smooth and under control. It's moments like these that make life feel simple and beautiful. But let's be honest, life isn't always a smooth ride. Sometimes you're just about to sip that perfect cup of tea only for your mischievous cat to knock it over. And boom, your mood drops. You can feel that frustration building, your mind racing. Why does life always seem to conspire against us? That moment, that sinking feeling, is a reminder that much of our suffering stems from our reactions, not necessarily the external event itself. Think about it, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. This ancient truth was shared by Seneca, one of the greatest Stoic philosophers. And wow, isn't it true? Most of the time, what stresses us out, a spilled cup of tea, Wi-Fi acting up during a Zoom meeting or a late delivery, isn't as catastrophic as we make it out to be. It's the story we tell ourselves about these events that compounds the frustration. The Stoic principle here is simple yet powerful focus on what is within your control and release the rest. You see, your actions, your responses, your mindset, those are always within your power. It's not about ignoring reality or sticking your head in the sand. It's about taking ownership of your thoughts and your actions while letting go of external circumstances that are out of your hands. Picture yourself in the middle of a bad day. Your computer crashes just before you submit an important assignment. You could spend hours beating yourself up over bad luck, blaming the system or spiraling into frustration, but with the stoic approach. You pause, you take a breath, you accept what has happened and move on. Maybe you rework the assignment. Maybe you learn a lesson about preparation and technology use. Either way, you didn't let your emotions hijack your ability to act. Number two, embrace the present moment. Imagine this, you're walking through a park on a sunny afternoon and the air feels perfect on your skin. You hear birds chirping, children laughing and the sound of leaves dancing in the breeze. But wait, you're not fully there. Your mind is racing. Maybe you're thinking about a conversation you had this morning, or what you need to do at work tomorrow, or maybe you're stewing about something you could have done better last week. Sound familiar? Our modern lives are a constant race. Notifications, emails, responsibilities, expectations. 
the mind never slows down. The 21st century is all about multitasking. We're so busy worrying about tomorrow, planning for the future, or stressing about the past that we rarely take time to just be. And yet, Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest stoic minds of all time, once mused, do not let the future disturb you, for you will arrive there if you nurture your present. The present moment is a gift, a constant opportunity for peace, but so many of us struggle to stay in it. Think about your most cherished memories, a Sunday brunch with your closest friends, sitting by a lake on a camping trip, the way your favorite song felt on your first road trip alone. Those moments, they felt magical because you were fully there. You weren't checking your phone, replaying an old argument, or obsessively planning for the next big thing. You were there. You were alive. Stoicism teaches us to let go of the anxiety of the past and the fears of the future by grounding ourselves in the now. Being in the present isn't about being perfect or ignoring your responsibilities. It's about focusing on what you're doing right now with your full attention. Savor your meals. Really listen to your friends when they speak. Feel the wind on your face or the sun on your skin. Life is happening right now, yet so many of us miss it because we're distracted. We let our thoughts rob us of what is happening right in front of us. The beauty of embracing the present is that you give yourself permission to experience joy as it comes. Instead of worrying about what might go wrong or dwelling on mistakes of yesterday, you can find peace by simply existing in this moment. It's liberating, isn't it? You don't have to chase happiness or success. You can simply experience life as it unfolds. Even when life gets busy or chaotic, this simple truth can be your anchor. The present is enough. But here's the thing. This isn't just a mindset shift. It's something you have to practice daily. It's like a muscle that strengthens the more you use it. So try this the next time you feel your thoughts wandering. Pause for a moment. Take a deep breath and look around you. Notice the small details, the sound of traffic, the smell of rain-soaked asphalt, the way light filters through the trees. Let these sensations bring you back to now. Because in the end, life isn't about getting there. It's about being here. So here's a question to ponder. What if the only moment you had to live in was this one? How would you experience life if you fully embrace the now? Number three, accept change as nature's course. Remember the first time you noticed the seasons change? Maybe it was autumn when the leaves would transform into brilliant reds and yellows, carpeting the streets with vibrant hues. Or maybe it was spring, when you'd feel the first warm breeze after months of cold. Seasons change effortlessly. They follow their own rhythm, their own course, and they teach us about life's natural cycle. But let's be real, change can be hard. A new job, a breakup, a move, the end of a routine you've grown comfortable with. Our instinct is to resist change, isn't it? We hold on to what we know, even if it's no longer serving us, simply because it feels safer. And yet, as Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Life is constantly in motion. It evolves, shifts and changes, like the flow of a river, unpredictable and fluid. Fighting against these currents can leave you exhausted, but learning to flow with them, that's freedom. Embrace change as part of life's natural design. Just like how the seasons shift, the tides move, or a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, life is about transformation, endings and beginnings. Every moment of change carries new opportunities. But here's the thing, the fear of change often comes from the unknown. We don't know what comes next, and that uncertainty can be terrifying. But if you look back at your own life, you might notice that some of your most pivotal moments came from moments of change. New friendships, career moves, family changes, personal growth. You didn't just survive those changes. 
You grew because you accepted them. So the next time you're standing at the crossroads of change, pause for a moment. Instead of fighting it, ask yourself, what can I learn here? What lesson might this change offer? Every unexpected detour has something to teach you. Maybe this change is leading you to a better version of yourself or a new path you would have never discovered had you clung to the old. Change isn't just a process to endure. It can become a journey of growth and discovery. How might you embrace this moment of transformation instead of resisting it? Number four, detach from external validation. Life can feel incredible when you get the thumbs up from others. Think about it. A simple compliment on your appearance, a job well done being recognized by your boss, or getting that like on a social media post. Those moments feel amazing. They affirm that you're doing well, that you're accepted, and that you're seen. They give you a brief rush of happiness that can light up your entire day. And who doesn't want that? But here's the tricky part. What happens when those validations stop coming, when you don't get the acknowledgement you're used to? That rush of happiness can feel fleeting, can't it? It disappears as quickly as it arrived, leaving you wondering if you're enough without it. It's as though you've handed over your self-worth to the opinions and judgments of others. This is a dangerous game to play because external validation is always out of our control. Someone else's opinion of you, no matter how much you value their input, is never something you can completely rely on. It's at this point that Stoic philosophy offers incredible wisdom. The Stoics taught that we can only find true peace when we detach ourselves from external validation. External validation is like trying to chase the wind. It can feel wonderful when you catch it, but it slips through your hands just as easily. Letting your self-worth depend on the constant approval of others is like building your house on shifting sand. Eventually, that foundation will erode. True happiness comes from within, from knowing you are enough without needing others to constantly reassure you. Now, this isn't to say that compliments are bad or that relationships with others shouldn't matter to you. It's natural to feel good when people admire your achievements or appreciate you, but the difference lies in how much weight you give to those outside opinions. When you rely on validation to determine your value, you allow other people's standards and expectations to shape your sense of self. And here's the thing, you can never truly control other people's opinions. No matter how hard you try, there will always be someone who has a different idea about you. That's life. Detaching from external validation starts by turning inward. Instead of seeking approval and affirmation from others, ask yourself, what matters to me? What do I value? When you make decisions based on your own principles and priorities, not the opinions of others, you free yourself from the stress of trying to live up to external expectations. Your happiness will no longer be a moving target based on what others think of you. Consider this idea for a moment. Think back to a time when you changed your behavior, goals or personality just because you wanted to impress someone else or avoid judgment. Maybe you dressed a certain way to fit in, said yes to something you didn't want to do because you feared disappointing others, or stayed in a relationship or situation you weren't happy with because you didn't want to risk losing approval. How did that feel? Often these attempts at fitting in or living up to expectations leave us feeling exhausted, inauthentic, and unsure of ourselves. Number five, recognize life's natural cycles. Life moves in patterns. Every moment of joy, every moment of pain, every moment of growth is part of a larger natural rhythm, the cycles of life. They're like waves in the ocean, rising, cresting, and falling again. Think about nature itself. The seasons teach us this lesson every year. Winter brings rest and reflection. Spring signifies growth and new possibilities. Summer bursts with energy and activity, 
and autumn is a time of letting go. These changes repeat every year, and yet they're never chaotic. They're graceful, natural transitions that are essential for renewal and balance. Now think about your own life. Have you ever felt like you were fighting against change? Perhaps you were going through a tough breakup, a career shift, or an illness, and you kept trying to force things back to how they used to be. The truth is, life doesn't work that way. Just as the seasons flow into one another, life naturally transitions between periods of growth, stability, and challenge. Recognizing these transitions can help you better navigate them and feel less afraid of change. Stoicism teaches us that change is neither good nor bad. It just is. It's part of the natural order of the world. When we resist change or cling too tightly to stability, we create unnecessary suffering for ourselves. But when we learn to recognize life's natural rhythms and allow ourselves to flow with them, life becomes far easier and more fulfilling. Imagine a tree during autumn. It releases its leaves to make space for the rebirth of spring. This isn't because the tree fears losing its leaves, but because it understands that the natural cycle of life involves letting go. Similarly, you have the ability to let go of what no longer serves you, old relationships, outdated dreams or fears, and make space for what comes next. When you recognize life's natural cycles, you can learn to see challenges as part of the ebb and flow, rather than as permanent obstacles. Life will always have highs and lows, moments of joy and moments of struggle. But they're temporary, just like the seasons. And just like seasons, they'll eventually give way to new beginnings and opportunities. Think back to a time when you were in the middle of a particularly challenging life moment. Maybe you were struggling through a time of personal loss or financial difficulty. At the moment, it felt overwhelming. It felt like you'd never get out of that situation. But now that time has passed, can you see how you grew stronger through it? How you learned something about yourself through that struggle? These moments, these cycles, teach you resilience, patience and perspective. They allow you to appreciate life in ways that only come after experience. You can think of life's cycles as invitations, invitations to learn, to reflect and to grow. Every season in life holds its own unique gifts even if you can't see them in the moment. Your job isn't to stop the seasons or fight the rhythm of change. Your role is to flow with it, to adapt, and to embrace its lessons. The more you embrace life's natural cycles, the more at peace you'll feel. You'll stop feeling powerless when things change, and you'll begin to trust in the natural process of life itself. You'll learn that endings lead to beginnings and that every change carries the opportunity for rebirth and renewal. Number six, seek growth in adversity. Let's face it, adversity is tough. Life can be unpredictable, unfair, and downright brutal at times. A job loss, a heartbreak, a financial setback, a death in the family. These are moments that can bring you to your knees. You can either let these moments define you or use them as opportunities to learn and grow. Most of us would rather avoid pain altogether. It's uncomfortable, it's hard, and let's be honest. No one wakes up and says, I hope I face a tough setback today. But here's the thing about challenges, they aren't meant to break you. They're meant to shape you. Every struggle you face can teach you something invaluable about yourself the world, and your ability to persevere. Adversity can be a catalyst for transformation if you approach it with the right mindset. The Stoics believed that challenges, pain, and difficulty are opportunities to exercise virtue, courage, wisdom, patience, and strength. These aren't just abstract ideas, they're practical tools that you can develop by learning how to face and overcome challenges. Think back to a moment when you felt the pressure of a personal setback, the kind that left you feeling lost or hopeless. 
Maybe it was a dream slipping through your fingers or a roadblock that made you question your direction. It's easy to look at these moments as insurmountable obstacles, but adversity has a way of forcing you to dig deeper. You have two choices to crumble or to grow. It might not feel like it in the moment, but the very struggles that feel like they could destroy you are often the ones that prepare you for your greatest achievements. Growth in adversity isn't about ignoring pain or pretending everything is fine. It's about learning from it. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this? How can I emerge stronger? What is this moment trying to teach me? When you adopt this perspective, challenges become opportunities rather than roadblocks. Adversity builds strength, character and resilience. It teaches you patience, humility and creativity. It shows you what you're truly capable of. And the beautiful thing about growth is that you can choose it not just once, but time and time again. Each challenge you overcome adds another layer of strength to who you are. When you embrace growth through struggle, you begin to see that adversity isn't just pain, it's transformation. Every obstacle you faced has given you the strength to keep going, to keep learning, to keep striving. It teaches you not to fear difficulties, but to welcome them as opportunities for evolution. The next time you feel overwhelmed, pause and ask yourself, what can I become from this experience? With every challenge, you have a choice. You can either let it define you or you can let it refine you. Number seven, cultivate inner riches. There's something liberating about being content with yourself. It's a kind of wealth that doesn't come from a flashy car, a big house or designer clothes. It comes from within, a deep personal understanding of your worth, values, and ability to find joy without being dependent on external circumstances. It's the kind of wealth that endures when everything around you changes. Inner riches are about cultivating peace, gratitude, and self-awareness. They're about learning to be at home within yourself, to trust your own judgment, accept your flaws, and recognize that happiness doesn't rely on constant validation from others or material possessions. Inner riches are cultivated through self-reflection, authenticity, and focusing on what truly matters to you. The beauty of inner riches is that they can't be taken from you. A fancy car can break down, a high-paying job can disappear, but your mind, your heart, and your inner peace are yours always. When you choose to focus on these things, you choose to build a foundation that can weather any storm. Take a moment to think about your happiest memories. Often those moments are simple, a warm conversation with a friend, a walk in the park, a beautiful sunset, a quiet evening spent reading a book. These moments have nothing to do with money or possessions, but everything to do with being present, connected and at peace with yourself. These are glimpses of the wealth that can only be found within. Our modern culture tends to glorify external success. Big houses, high salaries, beautiful vacations, and designer clothing. While there's nothing wrong with enjoying these things in moderation, it can be easy to let them define our happiness. The pursuit of external possessions as a source of fulfillment is often a never-ending chase leaving people feeling unfulfilled and stressed. But true happiness comes from developing inner stability and emotional balance, not from chasing what the world has told you will make you happy. Stoicism teaches us to focus on things we can control, our actions, our thoughts and our perspective. By learning to direct attention inward, you can start to cultivate these inner riches. It begins with knowing your own mind, learning what brings you joy, and being able to silence the noise of comparison and social pressure. Imagine you've spent years striving for a promotion or trying to prove yourself to others, only to discover that even when you achieve it, there's still a void. That void is often the result of relying on external measures of success 
rather than building the kind of inner wealth that satisfies your soul. When you shift your focus inward, you realize that you already possess everything you need, self-worth, peace, and joy, if you choose to nurture it. If you've made it this far, drop a comment below. Drop a hundred if you've watched this far. That shows you're part of the 0.01% of people who actually follow through and finish what they start. That kind of commitment is rare, and it sets you apart from the crowd. You're not just consuming content here, you're taking steps to improve your mindset and transform your life. If you're serious about making a change and truly living a life of purpose, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Join a community of like-minded individuals who are choosing growth, simplicity, and peace over the chaos of external pressures. Let's keep learning, growing, and building a better future together. I'll see you in the next one.